Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm directed to the Curse of Chucky 2013 Kill Count Recount by Demi. This is honestly where I think uh, the uh, Chucky or Child's Play series or franchise, whatever you want to call it, I think it starts to get better because uh, it pretty much uh, goes back to, uh, you know, like how originally it was. You know, it was supposed to be scary, you know, and have a little bit of humor, but. Uh, yeah, and see the Chucky, yeah, that's where I kind of, like, called it quits, like, nah, man. And uh, when I first heard that this movie was going to come out, I thought, like, oh, man, are they just going to do the same thing? Like, I was surprised. Like, this movie was really good. It it went back to its roots, you know, to what made Chucky and the Child's Play franchise, you know, why it, why it was so good, why it was so uh, memorable, uh why Chucky is, you know, like now, like one of the best, uh, you know, uh, horror movie villains, you know. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, let's check out uh, uh, the kill count, recount. Uh, if you want to like, comment, subscribe my channel, you can if you don't want to. That's fine too. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Curse of Chucky, released direct-to-video in 2013. That's right, direct-to-video! How did that happen? Well, honestly, I think what happened was that Seed of Chucky didn't do very well. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so it's probably really on me. Seed of Chucky's comedic detour was, by most accounts, a disaster. It was trashed by fans and critics alike, and made half as much at the box office as Bride. Still, I think it's insulting that Curse of Chucky didn't get a theatrical release, especially because it's so good. And yeah, maybe Seed wasn't, but neither was Curse of Michael Myers, Freddy's Dead, or Jason Goes to Hell. But those guys kept getting big screen sequels, probably because the studios could try again with new filmmakers. After a disappointment like Seed, most writer-directors would be removed from a franchise. But Chucky producer David Kirshner stayed loyal to Don Mancini and kept him on board. I'm guessing that's why Curse was downgraded to the home video studio Universal 1440. I'm sure they would have preferred replacing Mancini with someone they could easier push around. Mancini was just happy to have another chance, and he definitely made the most of it. Knowing that fans wanted to see a scary Chucky again, he returned the killer doll to its horror roots. For a time, he and Kirshner briefly considered remaking the first movie, but MGM still had the rights to the OG Child's Play, and besides, doing something the same again has never been Mancini's style. And I never wanted to be so repetitive that you just like know the story before you even sit down in the theater. In addition to its small screen release, Curse was given the smallest budget of the series. For reference, the original Child's Play budget was nine million dollars. Parts two and three and Seed were given 12 to 13 million, and The Popular Bride was made with a budget of 25 million dollars. Curse, on the other hand, five million dollars. Wow. That's a huge downgrade, especially since those animatronics ain't cheap. Mancini's response was to adapt and spend wisely and make Curse as an old dark house film, a subgenre of gothic haunted house movies inspired by James Whale's 1932 film of the same name. And it was concentrating all of our resources in this one location so that we were just in the studio mm. all the time, and that really helped us make the most of that limited budget and schedule. Inside the house are a bunch of mostly selfish characters who scheme and plot against each other for financial and personal gain. It creates a powder keg with a red-headed doll for a fuse. I think the cast is phenomenal, with everyone understanding their characters and the movie's tone perfectly. They also all had very positive things to say about each other. He's working on a lot of different cylinders, there's a lot of stuff firing off. She gives so much in a, in a scene. She's just very professional, she's committed, she's focused on what she's doing. I had the time of my life. Goes to show how friendly Mancini's set was. He was much more comfortable making Curse than Seed, which was out of his comfort zone. Curse of Chucky was intended to work for new viewers of the series, even while including many of its tropes. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend till the end. <laughs> that one's a classic. It's almost like a proto-requel. It's not really a requel, since it definitely doesn't erase the other sequels, but it puts them aside temporarily in order to establish new characters. It's a tonal reboot at the very least, scaling back its zaniness and returning to pure horror. The kills are less stylized than those in Bride and Seed, and are meant to be more realistic for a doll to have accomplished. But don't worry, sick fucks, the blood isn't lacking. This may have the most gore of the franchise so far. Can Chucky muster up some 
some theatrical kills in his first home video appearance? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with a delivery truck on its way to a spooky house. The owner of this creepy abode is wine mom Sarah Pierce, who lives there with Nika, her paraplegic daughter. Orphan Black's Jordan Gavaris delivers them a package from an unknown sender. The characters are clueless to its contents, but we know that box is good guy sized. Sure enough, inside yep. is Chucky, rocking a slightly new appearance, but one that's closer to his classic look. He's also rocking some classic lines. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Sarah don't wanna play, so she chucks that good guy in the mm. garbage. That night, Nika's awakened by her mother screaming and searches the house in a nightgown Those inspired by Amy Irving's and Brian De Palma's The Fury. She finds a deep red pool of blood that leads to her mother's body, which we see in silhouette as Nika calls 911. We'll see later, Sarah was stabbed by Chucky with a pair of oversized scissors. The camera pulls back a little further to reveal a seated Chucky and a title, wait for it, card. Sarah's apparent suicide brings around Nika's type A older sister, Barb. Could she do that? You got the wrong doll, Nika. Barb is played by Danielle Basuti, who horror fans may recognize as the woman in white oh, from Insidious yeah. 2. She's also a sort of legacy member of the Chucky family. Her uncle was a producer on the first film, and her dad did set dressing on part three. She remembers meeting oh, Don Mancini so cool. as a teenager on part oh. three's carnival set. Of course, the real legacy casting here is with Nika, played by Brad Dourif's daughter, Fiona. Yep. She had originally auditioned for Barb, but Mancini decided to give her the starring role. Fiona was excited to get it, since the franchise had always been important to her. He's been a part of my identity my whole life. The fact that I'm the seat of Chucky is, was the coolest thing about dating me in high school, period. <laughs> you know, and I, like, capitalized on it. She was also pumped to work with her dad. It was really cool shooting this movie with my dad. Brad, in turn, couldn't have been more proud of his daughter. The Aww. big difference is, is that my daughter's playing lead in this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which makes it... Um, probably quadruply exciting for me. I think Nika Aww. Pierce is just as good an addition as Tiffany Valentine. Fiona Dourif is great in the role, giving the character an intelligence and strength that makes it easy to root for her. I've only met Ms. Dourif once, but from my brief interaction with her, she seemed genuine and down to earth. All the behind the scenes stuff I watched only confirmed that impression. Barb has brought along her husband Ian and daughter Alice, our cute kid stand-in for the movie. She's also brought along their live-in nanny Jill and their priest Father Frank, much to the chagrin of the atheistic Nika. The church's official response to uh, a situation like this is not to judge, but to pity. <sighs> My mother and I have had quite enough pity, thank you. Father Frank is played by A. Martinez. Not sure which one. Barb wants to sell the house and put Nika in an assisted care facility. But Nika rightly surmises that Barb's just trying to get some cash money. To be fair, Nika, she's dealing with a lot. We're gonna have to send Alice to public school. Alice could use some extra schooling, since her response to getting jump scared by Chucky in the bathroom is to cuddle him close like a germy little teddy bear. She brings him downstairs to show off to her family. A difficult task for first-time actress Summer Howell, since the doll weighed nearly 50 pounds. Despite Barb's Damn. protests, Nika tells Alice she can keep the toy, She's which strong. gets Chucky dreaming about requiems. Fed up with being babied by her sister, Nika insists on making dinner for everyone. Alice volunteers as sous chef. Chucky hangs around for moral support. Nika attacks some killer <laughs> tomatoes for a pot of homestyle chili, but this ain't no Pixar film, and a clandestine Chucky decides oh. to turn one of these bowls into some mm. anti-ratatouille. The chili cone carnage is slotted into this Russian roulette wheel of a dinner table. It's one of my favorite shots. The camera spins around, turning the table into a revolver with the six dinner plates its chambers. Who's gonna bite the bullet, though? The oh, spinning has us all confused. Genius, Is it oafish husband Ian? Oh my god. What? Nope, it's not him. He's so good. <laughs> this is amazing. Is it yeah. cutesy child Alice? It tastes funny. Is it the random priest that's here? Father F Oh yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. that guy. The perturbed priest wipes sweat from his brow, but excuses himself before anything fun can happen. Chucky's real peeved about missing the show. But hold on, Chuck, because now we're at a car crash that's apparently killed two people, unnamed passengers of another car. The cause of the accident is Father Frank, whose head-on collision has been chalked up to drunk driving. Officer Stanton here don't buy that, though. I know him. I'm in his parish. He doesn't drink anymore. You sure about that? 
He's my sponsor. He finds Frank pinned by his neck and demands they try to pull him out. Big mistake. Oh. Huge. Since that metal was the only thing holding him together. Guess that makes this a head-off collision. I love that the movie fakes you out, suggesting that Father Frank will die of poison off screen. It'd be such a lame kill to kick off the carnage. And Mancini knows that, which is why he had the poisoning lead to this gnarly car crash instead. Key makeup artist Douglas Morrow built a rig that would spray blood out around A. Martinez's neck. Then they fabricated an absolutely amazing fake head. Seriously, that thing is impressive. Looks just like him. It's a pretty trippy thing. Back at the house, the adults watch some old home movies from when Sarah was pregnant with Nika. There's a sinister presence in this reel, but it ain't Bagul. It's Charles Lee Ray. Ooh, with the Hawaiian shirt. Aloha, my brother. Before we can unravel that plot thread, Alice runs in and says Chucky's gone AWOL for a game of hide and seek. Barb dispatches Jill to find the doll while Alice gets ready for bed. The nanny looks around for Chucky, but only finds dolls in the suitcase and dolls in the closet. Damn, this house is dripping with dolls. Dripping with something else too, turns out, because Barb and Jill are having an affair. It's revealed in the kitchen when they start nanny McFeeling each other up. The first act has several shots, suggesting that Father Ian is having an affair with Jill. But Mancini subverts expectations with a sapphic twist, giving the infidelity arc to Barb instead. At least Ian gets a couch potato pal. Nika finds Chucky sitting next to him and offers to return the toy to Alice. An extended overhead shot does a great job showing off Fiona Dourif's adeptness with the wheelchair. It comes from a previous role she had as the paraplegic in After the Fall. For that Hallmark movie, she trained to the point where she was wheeling around malls by herself. Mancini said it was a big part of casting her, since he was so impressed by her handling. After taking the elevator to the second floor, Nika gives the doll back to Alice. Instead of thanking her, Barb implies Nika shouldn't be living in this house by herself. Not only due to her use of a wheelchair, but also because of a heart condition she has that can be triggered by stress. Hope Nika's not afraid of storms then, like Alice is. The thunderbolts and lightning are very, very frightening, but she finds no comfort in there the devil put inside her sheets. Chucky, I'm scared. You fucking shoot. Just like in the original <laughs> Child's Play, the first time we hear Brad Dourif voicing Chucky is literally halfway through the film. He recorded all his lines a couple of months before production began, and before his daughter was ever cast. Your family was always my favorite, and now you are the last one standing, so to speak. That dialogue was then programmed into the Chucky animatronic by returning puppeteer Tony Gardner. We actually pre-record all the animatronic movement in the face from the nose down. When that was done, the puppet heads used servo motors designed by Peter Shabako. Other times, though, they'd move Chucky's mouth like a simple hand puppet. Nika calls the delivery company and finds out the doll was sent from an evidence depository. But the storm knocks out the phone signal before she can probe any further. Sorry, Nika, but with a haunted mansion like this, you're just asking for a thunderstorm. The Pierce's creepy Victorian mansion is the centerpiece to Curse of Chucky. It's creepy in a cool way. The floor is not always pretty looking. While the exterior was a bed and breakfast in Winnipeg, you idiot, the interiors were all a giant set built on a soundstage in the same province. Production designer Craig Sandells built the dark, oppressive space to reflect the negative energy put out by most of the characters. It's a great horror set, and everyone working together on it helped the production's positive vibes. It was so much fun shooting on that set. When the power returns, Nika investigates more with an internet search. She gets a rundown of the previous film's events and sees a face familiar to us, Andy Barclays. Andy Barclays. Upstairs, Jill strips down for a naughty video call with Barb. These two about to have the lowest pink cybersex session of all time. Pretty messed up how cavalier they are about it, though. Barb, your husband's literally yeah. right next to you in bed, and your daughter's sleeping 10 feet behind your boo. What the fuck? Jill misses a classic Chucky scare as he scurries behind her and pays the price when he oh. uses some leaky rainwater to kick her bucket. The puddle spills over and electrocutes her thanks to a very poorly placed floor outlet. This kill was inspired by a similar death in 1987's The Believers, although Jill's is a little more eye-popping. The shocking death knocks out the house's power. Barb gets out of bed to check on Alice, but Ian suspects she has ulterior motives. She might need me. Who exactly might need you? 
This crummy situation is what you get for cheating Dad Barb. She tries to feign innocence, but Ian reveals he hit a nanny cam in Chucky earlier. He intends on checking the footage for infidelity, I guess after he catches some more Zs. Good job, Ian. You're finally becoming a character. Jill's kill also glitches out Nika's computer, but not before she pulls up a photo of a Fabio-looking Charles Lee Ray. She connects the face to their home videos and realizes that something's up with the creepy doll. Barb's found the doll near the stairs to the attic and misinterprets Nika's warning as a conversation about Ian's nanny cam. Angry that her sister didn't tell her about the spy cam, she heads towards the attic to look for Alice. With the elevator out and her sister in danger, Nika resorts to dragging herself upstairs. Hell yeah, Nika, work them tries! Barb doesn't find Alice, but she does find Chucky with a knife stuffed in his overalls. She also notices some schmutz on his face. Here, let me get that for you, honey. The plastic peels away to reveal oozy Frankenstein stitches. Chucky's been wearing a doll disguise, which is why he looks weird and different. He was covering up the scars from Bride and Seed, though they're made less prominent in this movie. I'm not sure why his cover-up all of a sudden wasn't blended very well, but at least we're maintaining continuity here. With his cover blown, Chucky springs to life and holds Barb at knife point, shedding the rest of his face like this were Mission Impossible. He hits her with his favorite Harry Potter quote, You have your mother's eyes. Although he alters it to an R-rated ending. And they were always two. Get close together! Nika makes it to the second story just in time to see a bloody eyeball bounce down the stairs. It's a slasher twist on the famous shot from The Changeling, which is probably referenced as much as the Shining Axe attack. Barb's stunt double staggers into frame, then tumbles down into Nika, revealing that she's dead, with a facial injury that looks like a real eyesore. For this kill, another fake head was created that they could use for close-ups of the eye stabbing. This head is fine, but I think they got the fake eyeball's iris color wrong. We see a crystal blue eye roll down the stairs, whereas Danielle Basuti has green, green eyes. Yeah. In any case, the prosthetic they put over Basuti's face looks solid. I'm sure it was uncomfortable to wear, but it really looks like her eye is missing. The Tickle Me Tear reveals himself to Nika and descends the stairs in the only shot of the movie that uses a fully CG Chucky. Now Nika knows this doll is alive, and he's honking threats at her like a goose. <laughs> Nika wheels her way into Ian's room and wakes him up. He quickly takes stock of the situation and decides to get the fuck out of there. He slow-mo carries Nika down the staircase as the awesome score plays, done by OG Evil Dead composer Joseph Loduca. Ian gets Nika back into her chair and wheels her to the garage, narrowly missing a peekaboo playmate around the corner. Ian runs off to find Alice, giving Chucky a chance to sneak in for a Paranormal Activity 4 attack. He revs the family car till it turns Christine crimson, filling the room with carbon monoxide. Nika ain't looking to end her life at midsummer, so she attacks the good guy with a nearby hatchet. Ian walks in on her, screaming at a seemingly inanimate doll, and her manic behavior causes him to blame her for all the death. Oh my god. Nico, what have you done? The stress of the night finally catches up to Nika, who begins having a heart attack due to her condition. She has some medication for this kind of scenario, but Ian doesn't help her. He instead allows her to pass out as Chucky watches in the what background. She wakes up in a sticky situation, getting the Freddy Lounge treatment from Ian while he demands to know Ian where his sucks. daughter is. He decides to review the nanny cam footage to look for Alice and discovers what Chucky gets up to when the parents aren't looking. This is the best game of hide and seek ever. Just keep your fucking mouth shut. A loudly labeled live feed shows <laughs> Chucky creeping up on the duo, but slow-ass motherfucking Ian takes too long to figure things out. Chucky uses Nika as a battering ram to knock him to the ground. As Nika watches, Chucky strolls up to the fallen Ian. He gives him a jaw-dropping death and prepares him to take over ruling Underland. God, that exposed tongue is seriously nasty stuff. Actor Brennan Elliott had to get his head life cast for this, and as someone who recently went through the process, it's not comfortable, I tell you what. Worth it for another great fake head, though, with a disgusting missing jaw. Chucky tries tries to give the same treatment to Nika, but oh. she takes the hit with her leg like a badass. This, of course, was done with a prosthetic leg, which was easily hidden beneath Fiona's clothes. Chucky can't pull the sword from the bone, but Nika of the round table is more than worthy, so she bats that boy away and lops his head off like he were the Green Knight. That might have been enough to put him down in seed, but this Chucky's back to his classic resilient self. While Nika catches her breath, Chucky sits up like Mattel Myers and tops himself mm -hmm. back off. He then grabs Nika's wheelchair and runs her off the second floor 
score in an homage to Maggie's death from the original. This dreamlike fall, beautifully captured in slow motion, was a practical stunt performed under stunt coordinator Rick Skeen. The stunt performer was Kristen Sawatsky, who doubled for Fiona Dureff and Danielle Basuti. Sawatsky came from a dance background, giving her the knowledge of how to move her body through space. During this two-story fall, they kept the wheelchair on a tether to make sure it wouldn't land on her. Chucky makes his way down to the injured Nika in an awesome two-story crane shot. Having Chucky lay low for so long did wonders for Mancini's direction. And see, the dolls were front and focal for most of the film. And because they were complicated animatronics, all the shots had to be designed around their limitations. With Chucky back in the shadows, Mancini gets to flex his skills and move the camera around more, emulating his filmmaking heroes like Baba, Argento, and De Palma. In this staircase shot, Chucky's played by Debbie Lee Carrington, who doubled Tiffany and Bride and had a scene as herself in Seed, although it was ultimately cut. She seemed to really enjoy the experience. Once you put the head on and the overalls and you're given any weapon, whether it's the knife or the axe, it's fun. When Carrington stepped into Chucky's shoes, they had to be scaled up, as did the rest of his outfit, which took plenty of work on its own. Adele Berta hand-knit every Chucky sweater they used one at a time. To make one sweater for Chucky, it usually takes me about a week. As always, the effects team put in a ton of work to create the many Chucky dolls, which Gardner based on producer David Kirshner's original model from Child's Play. The latest advancements in technology allowed the puppeteers to work closer to the character, since they could be digitally removed from the footage later. But even after 25 years, the little bastard's still a diva. Chucky's got to fly away. Chucky didn't hit his mark. Chucky's not finding his light. Chucky's blocking. <laughs> He's Chucky. And Chucky gets 14 takes. All the attention to detail really shows in Chucky's clothes ups as he explains how the Pierce family fits into Chucky lore. Didn't your mother ever mention me? I'm an old friend of the family. In a black and white flashback, Chucky recounts how he'd met Nika's family before she was born. Her mother Sarah was pregnant with her, and her father Daniel was still alive. This flashback was the first scene shot for the movie, and Universal flew Fiona out early so she'd be able to watch her dad work. Good on them. Charles Lee Ray became fixated on Sarah and drowned the Pierce family patriarch off screen. His kill was chalked up as a tragic accident. It's a little less off screen in a deleted scene, but we still meet Daniel Pierce in the final cut, so the kill still counts when we see his funeral. At the funeral, Tommy we so so I fucks the widow <laughs> Pierce. I did not kill him. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not. Ray kidnapped Sarah and kept her captive for who knows how long in a trashy basement. At least he brought her floral arrangements, imported straight from Sin City. We've seen those yellow flowers in Sarah's art throughout the film, so clearly she was oh, forever yeah. haunted by this experience. Charles Lee Ray is once again played by Brad Dourif, now 25 years older than the character was when he died. They do their best to de-age him, most mostly through the hair, but the man has obviously aged quite a bit. Doesn't matter to me though, I just yeah. like seeing him on screen again. Yeah. Interestingly, this was the first time Dourif and Mancini were on a set together. Mancini wasn't on set for the original film due to a writer's strike, and that was the only time Dourif had an on-camera role until this movie. All their work together on the sequels had been in the recording booth. Being on set gave Dourif another first experience too. Today will be the first time I've ever seen Chucky in my in the plastic version work which is incredible so which is I, I, I am so i'm like floating on air a couple of cops close in on charles's nice. location he assumes they were tipped off by his tied up captive somehow out of anger and vengeance he goes vincent van gory off screen stabbing sarah's stomach which apparently caused nika's paralysis chucky says he's got a grudge against the pierce family because that was the night of the police chase we saw at the beginning of the original child's play wait a second then why was eddie caputo there as a getaway driver did caputo pull over so charles could make a pregnant poking pit stop doesn't make a ton of sense and i honestly don't love this depiction of Charles Lee Ray as a creepy, obsessive kidnapper. Makes him seem less like a stone-cold killer and more like a pathetic incel. But hey, at least we get this stylized rendition of Chucky's rebirth as a killer doll. He blames Nika's family for his current state, so he's here to deal with them like all the others. The Barclays, the Kincaids, the Tillies. He is, of course, referencing Andy and Karen Barkley, Jaden Warren Kincaid, and Jennifer Tilly. When he says that Nika's the last <laughs> one he's got to kill, she brings up Andy Barkley. The internet told her he's still alive, so she uses that to tease Chuck. You know, it's called completion anxiety. 
It's very common in males. It stalls him enough for the power to come back on, so Nika makes a mad crawl for the elevator. She gets inside and endures some painful looking knife slashes, then wrestles the knife away by straight up grabbing the blade, goddamn! But even after she makes it snow with a stab to Chucky's back, the doll just keeps going. He must have energizer batteries. Officer Stanton pulls up to the house, having earlier found out it was Father Frank's last known location. He busts in to find a bunch of dead bodies and a bloody Nika in the elevator. Naturally, Nika is charged for the night's yeah. killing spree. Her crazy doll talk gets her sentenced to a mental hospital, making this a bittersweet goodbye for the surviving heroine. I'm still alive! <laughs> Alive. Yeah, Stanton, and she's innocent. So you sit there and Brian to ponder your actions. In a scene meant to evoke the Bailey scene from Bride of Chucky, in both content and color correction, Officer Stanton sneaks the doll out to his squad car in an evidence bag. Dude can't even come up with his own dialogue. Hey, it's me. Yeah, I'm on my way. And don't forget my money. Hey! I'm on my way, and don't forget my money. Stanton cribs Bailey's death, too, since Jennifer Tilly makes a surprise appearance to slit his throat with her nail file. Same kill, but with a major gore improvement. The effects artists aren't like these cops. They never learn. This was a real simple, tried-and-true classic makeup trick. Actor Adam Hurtig wore a pre-slit neck prosthetic that would open when he tilted his head back. Then a bladder would pump blood through the tubes below it. Lots of blood. Lots and lots of blood. Tiffany packs up the pint-sized psycho and ships him off to Alice, who's living with her grandma now. The newly delivered Dolly wastes no time getting reacquainted with his old playmate. It's time to play. Hide and seek? Hide the soul. Chucky's actually chatting on a split screen here, since Summer Howell was too scared of his stitched up look to act in the same room as him. As he starts up his voodoo chant for the umpteenth time this franchise, we pan away for an out of place jump scare. It's Alice's packaged up grandma, this movie's final kill. Don't leave yet though, cause Curse has a Return of the King number of endings. The last is this post credit sequence that sees another toddler sized package delivered. The surprise recipient is none other than Andy Barkley, played by a 32 year old Alex Vincent, reprising the role for the first time since Child's Play 2. We get some expositional easter eggs as he talks to his mom on the phone and asks about Detective Norris. How's Mike doing? We also see photos of his foster sister Kyle and his degree from graduating Kent Academy. Huh, would have pegged him for a dropout. Chucky carves his way out of the package, intent on causing more mischief for Andy. But the movie ends with the comeback kid having wised up to his games. Play with this. Andy! Chucky doesn't go on the count. You'll see why next movie. But don't worry, there were plenty of other bodies to bag. Just how many? Let's find out at the numbers. What? Oh, no. Hey, sorry. Oh, oh. No, don't have time for this. Don't have time for a flashback that'll reveal backstory that doesn't really make a lot of sense. All right, I gotta get to the numbers. So let's just bring back the color. Okay. All right. We're all good. God. Come on. <laughs> Ten people died in Curse of Chucky, with the victims consisting of six men and four women. I want to check that pie chart for rat poison. I'll give Chucky credit for the car crash, meaning he added nine to his running total. Three were done with bladed weapons, Jill got electrocuted, I'll put the rat poison car crash under miscellaneous, and I'll include Daniel's drowning with Grandma's asphyxiation. Tiffany popped up at the end to give herself one more kill, another throat slip, so they've got these totals going now. Oh, oh no, we're done with Glenn slash Glenda for now. We can bring him back if we ever need to. The kills and curse slipped a bit, numbers-wise, but still stayed in double digits. And with a runtime of 95 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 9.5 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Father Frank. It's constructed in such an interesting way and does not skimp on the blood. Plus, you know me, I'm always a sucker for decapitations. Dull Machete for Lamest Kill will go to Daniel Pierce, whose kill Chucky couldn't bother to complete on screen. And Champion Chuckle for Funniest Part has fewer options since this movie's more serious in tone. But I always love when Chucky has no patience around little kids. This is the best game of hide and seek ever. Just keep your fucking mouth shut. And that's it. Curse of Chucky came out in 2013 and revitalized the franchise. They got a scare zone at Halloween Horror Nights, another sequel, and eventually the TV series on sci-fi. Yeah. We'll be looking at those next, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. On well, the next Kill Count. Is everyone around you insufferable? Fuck you! Do you wish they would all just die already? I just can't with this guy. Do you love Jennifer Tilly? That's so sweet. Then She's you should awesome. consider joining the Cult of Chucky. Welcome to the cult, pal. Thanks, you guys are the best.
Benefits include an all-expense paid stay at a blindingly white mental institution. I don't know about that. You'll also get the chance to reconnect with old friends, like the serial-loving Andy Barkley. I guess it's just me and you again tonight, pal. The cult of Chucky lifestyle is one of balance. You'll be able to find the humor in life. <laughs> Give me a hit off that, will you? But also remember the horrors. <laughs> If this sounds like the change you need in your life, it would behoove you to watch Cult of Chucky this week. Behooves. Listen to you. You sound like Hannibal Lecter. Then on Friday, join Chucky, Chucky, and Chucky for the Kill Count Recount. Only on Dead Meat. Let's watch it again. That one just never gets old. Cult of Chucky can currently be watched on the pictured streaming platforms. Demi always recommends you watch the movie for yourself before it's Kill Count. It's the only way to have your own properly informed opinion. Kill Counts are never meant to replace the experience of watching a film. film. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count recount. We are officially in the Nika Pierce era of the Chucky series, which is maybe my favorite just because it combines everything that came before it. And it feels like Don Mancini finally getting to do exactly what he wants with the series. Speaking of the series, the TV series comes back next week, October 5th. Please yep. make sure you watch it. And make sure that you watch the Dead Meat After Show will be doing after each episode. That's right, we're going to be interviewing Don and other people involved with the show and chatting with them about that week's episode every week for as long as season two's on. It's an amazing opportunity that I'm super fucking pumped to do. I want to thank some patrons like Sergeant Schlock, Shane and Katie, Sterling Bronkhorst, Zachariah, Venomenon, The Marmite, Rio Vivo, and Peter Spreet. Thanks, everyone. Be good people. Yeah, I can... Not wait to see that series. I love that we're getting back uh, Nico and, uh, of course, Jennifer Tilly. It's always good to see her. I like her. She's pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I've seen the, the Child's Play series. And, uh, yeah, I cannot wait for season two where uh, <laughs> Chucky's, Chucky's going to be terrorizing a church, man. Or, Chuck, or was it, like, Sunday school, man? Like, it's going to be awesome just gonna be running around killing priests and nuns and all that like it's gonna be awesome uh, yeah that that is yeah like that has to be pretty cool to you know like you've been working on this franchise for the longest time and now finally like your kid is taking part in it and she took and you know she she's not just she's not just like in it she's the main character now like uh yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that was that was pretty cool to see that that little moment of uh, see Alex Vincent and Brad Dorf hanging out together. That was pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, this is the first time that Brad Dorf actually and uh, Don Mancini, Don Mancini's on set with Brad Dorf. He couldn't be on the first one because of strike. Man, like, that's crazy. Like, I would have thought that they've, you know, uh, uh, worked together before, like, in the first movie. Uh, uh, yeah, the the series, I think, honestly gets better from here. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't really a big fan of the, the remake, the, the new Child's Play movie that came out, I think, when did it come out? Last year, two years ago? Where they had a uh, Mark Hamill voice Chucky. Uh, it's it's not that I didn't like uh, Mark Hamill. I thought he was great. I thought he was awesome. But I don't know, man. Like it just seemed like everything else just uh, just it just it's it just wasn't my child's play, man. It just wasn't my Chucky. Like I don't know, man. But you know, if you like that movie, you thought it was you know okay, you know, you know. You do you, man. Like, uh, I, I, it, ju it just wasn't my cup of tea. I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, but like I said, yeah, like I like I really like Curse of Chucky. It was way better than what I thought it was gonna be. Uh, and also Cult of Chucky. And I also like the series. Like I said, I cannot wait for season two. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Curse of Chucky 2013 Kill Count Recount by Dead Meat. Everyone take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.